Okay. Who's going to provide her version of what's in your spice box? Ladies and gentlemen, please, a rousing welcome for Reverend Beverly Strauss. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning, and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, East Hawaii. Yes, look at your faces. Woo. I just love it. And I want to extend a welcome to everybody that is here for the first time, both in person and online. If you do resonate with our message today, we only have two words for you. That is welcome home. Thank you for being here. And a word to Joan. We love you. We're holding you close in prayer. And thank you for your wonderful creative thoughts. And to Reverend Kathy, thank you so much for stepping up and sharing her message with us. Thank you. Doc, man, your music's good. Yes, it's so good. So, so good. Love it. And of course, you know, I love the fact that Joan actually spoke to food because that's what I do. I'm a cook. I love cooking. I love cooking. So, of course, and some of you might have had some of my food. Oh, I see a little good nod over there. <laughs> and I love using, so I actually refer today to my spice rack because I have an official rack. The fact that it's in the fridge in Hawaii, you'll understand because up on the shelf, it doesn't work. So I keep my spice rack in the fridge. So, and we're going to move through today talking about our spice in our lives, how it comes in, what it means, hopefully with a little food in there. And yes, the brownies are epic. So wait around for them. So um, I've got to add a little humor in here because you know, when I check out the little comedic sayings for the day, spice doesn't come with much fun which I was amazed because, you know, I kind of like the tingle of that spice in my nose. But did you hear about the shipment of spices that fell into the ocean? Huge waste of time. Ah, oh, parumching. It doesn't get any better. I'm sorry, it does not get any better. In fact, the wise spice trader was known for his Sage advice. Uh, so one of the reasons I like to bring in this idea about the spice trader is because, as most of you know, I'm born and raised in South Africa. South Africa was actually discovered in many different ways, but it was ultimately settled by people from the Dutch East India Company that were traveling around Cape of Good Hope to get to India. Silks, spices, this was their purpose. So the first settlement was down in Cape Town. This was a place where, um, of course, they had many shipwrecks. This is a place where they had, were able to put citrus in, and it ended that whole scurvy thing that we get on the boats at that era. 1652, I believe. Gosh, I hope I'm right. <laughs> but on the other side, as you went up the coast, there's a little place called Natal. It's one of the provinces, and Durban, is the main town there. And later in the 1800s, um, there was the sugarcane farmers. They couldn't find enough of the local indigenous folks that were willing to work the sugarcane. So they imported laborers from India. Well, of course, you bring over laborers from India, what do you bring? You bring their cuisine. And their cuisine is filled with spices. It is filled with them. And uh, one of my favorite things that we would do is at least once every two years, sometimes a little more often, we go visit my aunt who lived in Durban. And in Durban, they have this huge plaza. It's a huge plaza. And it's all staffed and run by Indians from India with their local wares, the colors. Oh, the colors were just magnificent. The fabrics, the textures, the ornaments, the shine, the beauty. Remember all these words. They're all coming back around. So all of these things made up this experience. And of course, I was young. I was maybe, you know, a young child. And my mom would gather fabric that would make for my ballet outfits. But you know what? Of course, 
as it would be a mirror for what was going to come later in life when we got to the booths that had the spices, the bags of spices. A lot of them un just raw. You know what I mean? Just the, not uh, milled, not crushed. The, the bags, the bags of spices, the, the trays of all these unique, wonderful, wonderful smelling things. I was in heaven. My nose would tingle. Sometimes it would tingle a little too much, but it would just tingle in it. And then they would mix you your personal blend. Your personal blend. They would ask you some questions around, what is your dish going to be? How hot do you like it? What are the things you enjoy about it? What are the things you don't like? And they would take a piece of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of the next thing, and they'd mix it all together for you and put it in your own little bag, your own little container, when you went home and you put that into your dish, oh, it was magnificent. It would hit every one of those beautiful spaces on our tongue. All of the five different taste centers on the tongue, the salt, the sweet, the sour, the bitter, and what we've come to know as the umami. Every single one of those flavors would be in your personal blend of spices. And it would make that dish that you're having yours. And even if there was somebody else with you that was eating the exact same dish, they would taste it just a little differently. Because we have this individuality within all of these centers in our mouth. The other day I was called to make curry and I was like, yeah, I wonder why I'm making curry. Now, when I say curry, I don't mean that yellow powder that you buy on a shelf. I actually brought my own blends from South Africa and I used them. Wow. Besides from the moment in time that is so unique and special, it brings up all those memories that Joan spoke about, all of them. I can be sitting at the table with my parents on the farm. I can be out with my aunt, smelling it all again. So these are the things that spices bring to us. And um, they're to enhance the flavor of our food and also enhance the flavor of our lives. And one of the things I learned as a massage therapist was the Ayurvedic medicine. Where these are not just flavors for food, these are flavors for health. If there's something that is overheated in your body, you'll get a spice that cools it down. If you're in deficiency over here, you'll have some spice that brings it up. There is this blend in the Ayurvedic method that is completely associated with food, the different spices, and the heat and cool of the body. This is an old, one of the oldest known medicinal um, philosophies or ways of life and it's embedded in the Indian culture and tradition. So we look at this and um, we want to say, well, how does this mirror in our life here today? And Michael Bassey Johnson, who is this inspirational writer that wrote the Infinity Sign, he says, you are the salt of the earth and you are here to season the world. So we are the salt and we're here to season. But how do we do this? So let's look at the spices in our lives. Dr. Ernest Holmes calls us chemists. We are chemists in the laboratory of the infinite. What then shall we create? We are chemists in the laboratory of the infinite. What then shall we create? We are literally mixologists. Mixologists. Anybody here been a bartender? Yes, but it's not just for alcohol, it's for food, it's for life. If anybody's ever done color for hair, mixology is in there. You're mixing all these unique ingredients that are going to come to create a specific thing you desire. Sound familiar? 
Isn't this part of our lives? This is what we do on a daily basis. So today when we're looking at our spices, we're going to look at the actions we take or the adventures, kind of like the physical side of it. We're going to look at the emotional side of it, the psychological side, and then of course our beliefs. Yeah, you like it when we get to those ones. Our beliefs, the spiritual side of it. So first we start with our actions. What do we do to spice up our lives? This is the easy one. Somebody goes, I got to do something. My life feels like I'm in the doldrum. You want to spice it up. So we take a trip. We take a trip. We get, might just go walk through the garden. But we are going into action to change something that we're feeling physically in our bodies. We're going to do something different. Maybe it's something we know from before. Maybe we're going to choose something new. But we are activating change physically in the body. These actions are our spices. It's pretty simple. And we do it every single day. We don't always think about it. We don't always set an intention around it. But we do it anyway. We don't want to pitch a tent in the doldrums. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all about quiet time. If anybody knows me, I love my couch potato time. That's not a doldrum. That's another spice that I'm adding into my life, my life of choice. I get to choose how I want my day to be. I can be in the doldrums, and I'll support you right where you're at. Not much fun, though. I'd much rather take an excursion with you, run up to a volcano, do something, come and sit and have tea with me. If anybody's had tea with me, you know, mm, that can be quite an experience. Yeah. <laughs> I see some nods around here. Yes, so you take action to shift something in your life that doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel exciting, it doesn't feel like you really want to carry on doing it. And it's wonderful and it's perfect in every way. We spice up our lives. Then we move from the actions of the physical world to the emotions. These are a little trickier. Yeah, emotions are a little trickier. We have the sadness. We have the anxiety. We have the fear. Yeah, but don't forget, we also have happiness. We also have excitement. But these are the emotions in our bodies. These are the things that can literally turn into illnesses in us if we do not try and balance them out. So here we get back to the balance. We get back to the balance. We take a little of this, a little of that. And if you're cooking your meal and you find that it is too salty, what do you do? Anybody know the answer? Let me hear. Add a potato. First and foremost, you add a potato. Potato is absorbed. Now, potato is not a spice, but it is an action that you are taking to minimize the salt. Isn't that cool? You throw a potato. If you've got a stew that's going, it's too salty, throw a potato in. I've saved many a dish that way because you can be overhanded. You know, the other day I was pouring some stuff. Of course, it all just poured out. What do I do? Throw in a potato. It works. And then, of course, if there is a balance differently that you want, you're going to throw in something sweet, maybe a little, a little garlic for a little added pang. These are your emotions. Now, I am not going to connect a specific emotion with a specific spice because everything is individual. What will be hot for me would be cooling for you. What would be activating for me could be like really depressing for you. So it's all individual, but they are all connected. If we need some heat in our body, pick up that curry, maybe, or ginger. I won't touch the ginger because there's a heat in my body, an emotional heat maybe, that is going to be activated with the ginger and what is now going to be beautiful and healing for somebody else is going to take me 
right off the edge of the cliff. And therein where we make our own choices, our own decisions for what is happening in you right here, right now. And yes, we can throw an action in there to activate the emotion, get it going, but it's all part of making the choices of do you want it differently. Yeah, therein lies the key. Dr. Ernest Holmes will say we are always a choice. Every minute of every day we are a choice. And even if you're choosing not to choose, you are still choosing. Because you're choosing not to choose. So you're still in choice. So why not make a choice? Make a choice that's going to take that feeling, that yuckiness in you. Add a little something that is going to spark the joy, the love, the, joy, the happiness, the excitement. And shift it. Now, you don't have to blend it out. Texture is wonderful. Blending is absolutely beautiful. Dr. Ernest Holmes speaks about fear like this. Fear has brought confusion. So now we're in a state of confusion. Faith will give birth to confidence. Anxiety has brought days filled with conflict and nights full of dread. But faith alone can heal this confusion and drive from our minds all thoughts of fear and dissipate all anxiety. Love alone can bring harmony into our lives. So even though, yeah, love alone can bring harmony into our lives. So even though we can go ahead and create our own blend and put this in and that in and things that we know from before, there are certain things that are basic, there are certain activities that will shift, and you will find what relates to that for you. What is your faith? Where does your faith sit? What is the conflict that can be released? How can love bring harmony into your life? How can love bring harmony into your life? And then we move from our emotions to our beliefs. Yes, our beliefs. Now you're watching the action, you're watching the emotion and the belief. And we'll ultimately see that it's all one big process and big blend in our whole day. What I want to know about the belief system, what needs to be tossed? Anybody have in their spice rack or their cupboard a spice that is more than a year old? Come on, folks, everybody, raise your hands. I know every single one of you has got at least one spice there that you bought and you've gone, I'm going to hold on to this just in case. Yes, every single one of us. I have some in my cupboard in Phoenix that is well over 10 years. Why am I holding on to it? You know, it's lost its power. It's lost its scent. It's lost its efficacy. It's lost everything. And yet I'm still holding on to it. Why? Just in case I need that little drop. Well, you know, I'm going to have to put the whole bottle in and it's still not going to taste like anything. And it's in the back. And every now and then I clear out and I go into, and it's still in the back. What am I thinking? Yeah. It's just that. What about our beliefs? Anybody got a belief that should have been tossed a year ago? <laughs> Anybody got a belief that should have been tossed 10 years ago? Yes, there we go. I can see it. Of course we do. Now. I understand that sometimes if it is closed up, right, if it's like a, a nutmeg in a shell or if it's not ground, it can last longer. You have to cut through that shell. You've got to grind it up. So those can last longer, just like our bad hidden beliefs. Sometimes you've got to crack those suckers open. You've got to get in there and smash them down, put them in some heat and fire. And then it's like, yeah, this is still not good. 
we've got to trash these. So these are the beliefs that we want to address. We want to get in there and go, what is that belief that no longer serves me? What is that belief that's not going to bring anything to my meal? Not a damn thing. In fact, it can make it bitter. It can. As opposed to enhancing what we're doing, it can take us in the other direction. I think it's time to clean out those cupboards, get rid of those beliefs, break some of them open, smash them up, so that you can realize that they actually have zero flavor, zero power over you. Zero. Then, yes, then we can look at those qualities of the divine that are not one single spice. Something like joy, wisdom, compassion, harmony, love, and peace. These things are not one spice. These things are made up of the sour and the sweet. These things are made up of the salt and the pepper, the heat and the cooling. These are what we call the perfect blend. This is where we take it, and each one of them is individual to you. How do you blend your joy? What brings joy to you? And I'm not talking about happiness. Happiness is a completely different thing. Joy is that emotion, that feeling, that life force that is inside of you that cannot be moved by anything. It doesn't matter if you are sitting on the graveside of your best friend and you are in sadness and a massive amount of loss, there is still joy present in your body. This is a quality of the divine that is made up of all the different emotions. It comes from within and it feeds us. It feeds us because it supports us unconditionally. So does wisdom. So does love and peace and compassion. These are all made up of a myriad of different actions, a myriad of different emotions and a whole slew of beliefs. That's the blend we want to get to. That's where we want to go. Dr. Holmes says, peace comes from the absence of fear, from a consciousness of trust, from a deep underlying faith in the absolute goodness and mercy, the final integrity of the universe in which we live, and of every cause to which we give our thought, our time, and our attention. Peace comes from, to ev from every thought that we give our thought, our time, and our attention. Those thoughts, the times, and our attentions are the spices that we all pull together for that one perfect blend that we are going to enhance our lives. The joy the wisdom, harmony, love, peace, compassion. These are the experiences we want to have. And why do we want to do that? Because it brings life to us. It lights up our world. It lights up our experience here. Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go and do that. Because what the world needs are people who have come alive. People who have come alive. This is what we do. This is what we do when we bring our spice rack and we go to it and we pick and choose what we want for this day. And we blend it all together to create that magnificence so that we can be who we were called here to be. The beneficial presence that walks this planet. We're not denying 
anything around us. We're looking at it straight. You're looking straight at your dish. You're tasting your dish. You're asking the question, what does it need? What does it need to elevate it from just this to wow, to epic? We can go through all the different levels and it doesn't have to be a roller coaster ride or a carnival every single day. No, it can be that beautiful, mild calmness with a little touch of cilantro on top just to blend it and soften it down. It can be that as well. Ah, Dr. Holmes says, life is not just something to be endured it is to be lived in joy and fullness without limit. This is what we get to do. This is what brings us alive. So my invitation to you this week is to go to your spice rack. If it's in the fridge, if it's in the back, go into the back corner. Put your hand all the way in. Bring out that one that's way back there. Ooh, it's going to be a jar. It might be a little yucky. Look at it, smell it, and go... I'm done with you. You no longer serve me. That's one belief out the way. Pick up another one. Crack it open. See what's inside. If it's worth it, mix it up and taste it. If it's not, poof, toss it out. And then go in search of what lights you up. What is that spice or the herb that lights you up? Bring that in. Go do it. Go find it. Go taste it. Cook it. Bring it to us. Share it with everybody. Tell people how magnificent your specific blend is. Light yourselves up. Light us up as a community. Light up the world. This is what we're called to do. This is who we are. I'm waiting to hear some fun things and some fun things that have been cooked over the next couple of weeks. So that's my invitation to you. Make yourself that curry. Make yourself bring in all your old memories. Lean into the smells. Lean into the tastes. Lean into the actions, the emotions, and the beauty of your beautiful beliefs. And I want to leave you with this. Hmm. This came across my table last night right before I closed my eyes. And I was like, Thank you. Thank you, Spirit, for sending this to me. It's the prayer of St. Francis. <laughs> this is how we blend and adjust the flavoring in our lives and in our actions, our emotions and our beliefs. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, and it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in the dying that we are born to an eternal life. Amen. And so it is. Oh, let's take this to prayer. We just take a beautiful deep breath in. And we rest back into the wonderment of who we are as these expressions of the divine. And I recognize and know that right here, right now, there's only one power, one presence, one source, one infinite creative mind that I call God. And knowing that God is all there is, all that is seen, all that is unseen, omnipotent, omnipresent, ever creating, supplying, and supporting sustaining and maintaining every single expression. And I know that we are all one with this. We're all made up of the sameness that is the divine. We are of it, in it, 
and it is on us and through us. Hmm, and I know for each one of us that as we walk our path this week, that we will smell and taste and experience the wonders that are part of our spice rack. The highs and the lows, the heat and the calm, the cooling and the depth and the umami of life itself. This is why we are called here. And I know for us that we uncover this umami that is life itself having its way as us. And I call it good. So I know as we do this walk for ourselves, it is for all of our community, all of humanity, for we know that every breath we breathe is the breath of the divine, breathing us and everyone. That interconnectedness of all life is present in the one right here, right now, and I call it good. So I just released this prayer with a ton of cinnamon and cayenne and pepper and salt and all the herbs and the rosemaries and the thyme, knowing that these are the essences and the flavorings of our life, and I call it good. So please help me as we say it together. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna.